So in this video I am not going to hold anything back. By that I mean I'm normally a very grounded traditional electronics engineer following the laws of physics. But in this video we are going to dive down the rabbit hole very deeply and we are going to show how the laws of physics are not what we have been taught in universities. Conventional physics explains our world as separate areas in physics that are not connected or not related. But in this video I'm going to show you how it is all connected and it's actually fundamental on consciousness. So come with me, let's dive into the rabbit hole. But be warned, I'm going to use the C word, which is consciousness. And it's going to tie everything together and explain to you how things that traditionally cannot be explained like gravity will easily be understood when you include consciousness into space, time, electricity and magnetism and all the other forces we see in our daily world. Our physical world looks very beautiful in places but it's all based on randomity the beauty of our world comes from consciousness assigning some value to certain structures or certain organizations of material. It does not mean that the physical world has some intrinsic property that makes it beautiful. Beauty is just a value that we assign it it's a quality or a communication that we put on certain objects or certain material things. It is hard to imagine how such a complex world could come together and form so many different forms of life. But it basically comes from consciousness, which was all there was prior to space-time being invented by consciousness. And you might say, well, how did space-time come to be? Was it some sort of formula or some sort of cosmic design or a wish by the Supreme Being, etc.? Well, the answer is no to any of those things. The physical world came to be when the world was just all 100% no space. It was consciousness anywhere, everywhere, anytime, basically before the existence of the physical universe. And then a unit of the Supreme Consciousness decided it wanted to have a viewpoint of dimensionality. And at that instant, there was no Big Bang, but it was just simply an eyeball basically appearing in space, which was created as a side effect from consciousness assuming a single viewpoint. You cannot have space without a viewpoint. So basically the Supreme Consciousness condensed itself to a single point in black open space and it created a point to see in the distance and that may also be the reasons why we have atomic particles, etc. But the point is space-time was created by consciousness, started off with a single viewpoint, then more and more came in, and 
Well, you can ask how many, I don't know. But we all were there. There was no Big Bang theory that created the universe. It was basically an avalanche of viewpoints that came into our space-time and they shared the view, they shared the dimensionality of our physical world and the interactions became more and more complex and they started forming clusters and rings and uh, physical laws such as electricity, magnetism, gravity, etc. are just a side effect of the two qualities, or the two properties of consciousness, which is consciousness can intend and it can perceive. There's only two qualities of consciousness. Those are the two, intention and perception. And when we talk about perception, consciousness can perceive 360 degrees all around but physical perception usually is most thought of as the light band or the light frequencies and that is very directional so most life is formed with eyeballs or l perception in the light frequencies looking forward in a certain direction but perception is the second quality of consciousness and that actually is 360 degrees regardless of where it is what time it is it well, back up a little bit. Consciousness is everywhere and any time. So it can assume a viewpoint anywhere, any time, and has the ability to perceive. Some remote viewers, they think they are getting information from a cosmic storage somewhere, or there are other reasons for why psychics can have knowledge of the world but that's really unnecessary you just need to know that consciousness as one of its two prime properties is to perceive and there's no limitations on the perceiving it can perceive anywhere anytime on any frequency but it does need to assume a viewpoint it cannot perceive everything anywhere at all times while it's spread out as a cloud everywhere which is basically the native state of a consciousness it it doesn't have a unit or a viewpoint or an eyeball the basic property of consciousness is that it's all potential all-knowing and it assumes a viewpoint, condenses. So consciousness can assume a viewpoint anywhere, anytime. It doesn't need to move, it doesn't need to have some sort of uh, memory or have some sort of uh, deposit of information to find out if it belongs somewhere or wants to be somewhere. It can just assume a viewpoint anywhere, anytime.